Book Club Schmook Club is brought to you by Talk Bomb. It's a book review show where I, Kristen Rogers Anderson, and my brother, Will Rogers, talk about a different book every other week. For more information, like our full archive of shows and our calendar of upcoming books, go to talkbomb.com slash schmook. S-H-M-O-O-K. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram under the usernames at Chill and Kristen and at Haunted Sponge. Book Club Schmook Club is available on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Book Club Schmook Club. I'm Kristen. I'm just regular old William. <laughs> <laughs> I'm different, Kristen. I'm 100th episode, Kristen. Oh, this is how we celebrate? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Everything's different now. Episode 100 of Book Club Schmook Club. Yes. Can you believe it? Can you believe Are you asking me? Or are you- I'm actually asking you. Do, do you feel as if we've done 100 episodes? Well, no, because we've done more than that. We've done way more than that. Because I'm not counting the extracurricular ones. I never <laughs> right, did. Right, right. Um, and we only started doing them like midway through, so we're not actually sure how many episodes. I mean, we could figure it out. It yeah. seems like it's a uh, hundred because I started counting at some point. I'm just gonna, I'm yeah. just gonna trust that I counted correctly then. But we used to do. Uh, we didn't uh, for a while now, for months now. We've mm-hmm. done an entire book per show. Yep. Uh, but we used to divide up a book or, uh, and cover it over the course of a month. Oh, man. I didn't even think about that. So we've done like a lot more than 100 episodes. Oh, we've done more than 100 episodes. Yeah. How many books do you think we've read? It's not 100. 60? Wow. That is a great guess. Really? Yes. What is it? I counted earlier and then I forgot. It's just north of 60. 63? I just told you I forgot. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I got <laughs> <laughs> That's an example of how I should listen yes. and not just plan what I'm going to say while the person is talking. Mm, yeah, that is mm-hmm. a good example. Yeah. Thank you. Please You're pay welcome. attention. I'll try. I give you these free classes all the time. <laughs> in in what? In paying attention? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're here to talk about yeah. the book Meddling Kids. Meddling Kids. Kristen. By Edgar Quintaro. Uh, I believe. We, we can't give our history with Meddling right. Kids. Uh, it is a, a fairly new book. It came out and I believe. Cantero, excuse me. Came out and I believe June. Mm-hmm. And, uh, everything that I've read online is incredibly, uh, positive reviews about yeah, this book. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but it is a sort of like spiritual spin off of Scooby Doo mm-hmm. in some ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you this. What's your history with Scooby Doo? Cause I think oh, we okay. ended up reading this. Yeah. Partially Fun. because of a fondness for yes, Scooby Doo. Completely. If we did not have that fondness, wouldn't we be wouldn't so be so excited for this. Totally. So, what is your background with uh, the Mystery Machine, Scooby Doo, and all this and that? <laughs> and all this. And all that. Um, I love Scooby Doo. I mean, I can't say that I've watched a whole lot of Scooby Doo recently, but I loved Scooby Doo when I was a kid. I used to wake up at six o'clock so that I could watch Scooby Doo before I went to school. Mm-hmm. And um, Will and I really enjoyed some of the movies, like the, the cartoon movies, even yep. the later ones. Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, love Scooby Doo. Have yes. great feelings about it. What about you? Love yeah. Scooby Doo. Like yeah. you, I also used to get up early just so I could watch Scooby Doo. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking like old Hanna Barbera, like oh, original yeah. Scooby Doo. The times that Scooby Doo would meet like Batman and Robin mm-hmm. and they'd be running away from the Joker. Yeah, totally. Um, to all like the, the weird Hanna-Barbera wacky races. Mm-hmm. The times that they fought real monsters instead of just unmasking yeah. their being an old man. Um, Matthew Lillard taking over the role. I haven't, well, I've seen the movie, but I haven't seen the cartoon since he's been doing Shaggy in the cartoon. I've checked in. Uh-huh. I probably have not checked in in like a solid decade. Yeah. But um, I would check in because I like Matthew Lillard, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, it's cool that he's now also Shaggy." I know who I liked. Yeah, and I wonder what it, what the show is like now. And mm-hmm. I always just like I have a fondness for it. It's one yeah. of those old like stalwart franchises that it's comforting to know that it's out there. Yes, I, I may not be watching it feel that way, but I'm glad it's happening. Totally. And so that brings us to mm-hmm. meddling kids. Yes, uh, we're going to start as always with a spoiler free. Review. That's right. Of meddling kids. Uh, later in the show, in like probably 10 minutes, mm-hmm. we will get spoiler heavy. Yep. But if you are considering picking up this book, fret not. We are not going to ruin anything. We're going to tell you the bare premise of it right now mm-hmm. so that we all know what we're talking about. Chris and I are going to give our bare recommendation. Yep. Before we get spoilery. Yes. Because if you know so anything about Scooby Doo, is- it's a mystery. Mysteries have answers you may not want to know ahead of time. That's right. So everything is going to be safe. 
It'll remain a mystery until we warn you that it's about to get revealed. That's that we're right. about to pull the mask off of meddling kids. That's exactly right. Yep, but for now, it's totally fine. Perfect. Spoiler free. So, Kristen, okay. hit them with that spoiler free plot synopsis. All right, get ready, gang. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, I forgot that I make a joke in this. This is every episode. Yeah, <laughs> every know, single episode, you look at what you wrote and go, oh, my God. <laughs> I forgot. It's like one of those like circular writing things where I call back to it at the very end. Like It's, it's going to be at the end of the spoiler review, so you're not going to hear it right now, but here's the beginning of it. Here's a story of a bunch of kitties and one very clever taily waggy dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So Andy, Carrie, Nate, Andrew, and their loyal and their loyal pup helped solve tons of mysteries in Blighton Hills as teens. And after a particularly frightening case involving a possibly haunted house and a man in a costume to scare off the locals so that he could hunt for hidden gold, sound familiar, Scooby Heads? They went their separate ways. However, they may have left Blighton, but the case never quite left them. And the case was never quite as cut and dry as it seemed. The lingering feeling of unfinished business draws them back together and black to and back to Blighton to finish what they started. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So that's no spoilers, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Um, Kristen. Yes. Do you recommend meddling kids? I'm going to read you my written recommendation. Oh. Okay. Okay. I think that's something I'm going to do now. What? I did it last time. Yeah, but that doesn't that defeat the point of us sitting here and talking? I guess. <laughs> I just have to hear you list out all your points and then go, oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. We'll do this one last time then. Okay. Do I recommend it? Yeah. I thought it was a lot of fun. It never felt like a chore to go back to it. It's not a five-star book for me, but there's far more to like than dislike. I liked it, but I almost felt like it would be better suited as a graphic novel or a movie since it was so action-heavy, and I don't love just straight-up reading prolonged action scenes. Come to think of it, I don't love prolonged action scenes in, gen- scenes in, gener- in general, but I totally enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah. William? I do not recommend this book. Okay. I also uh, really don't even want to talk about it. Okay. And I, uh, I, w- I'm gonna feel bad for everything that I say for the remainder of the episode. Ugh, I hate these conversations I where I like something and you don't. I know. <laughs> and I've been thinking about it all day and trying to think about how is it best to tell you uh-huh. that I did not like this book. Um, and so I'm just gonna say I didn't like it. Okay. And that, um, show over. <laughs> And that uh, I think that you're just so like very st- you're very um, definitive when you don't like things. I and then it makes me defensive about things that I don't even actually feel defensive about. But that's and the thing weird. is like I also don't want you to be on the defensive because I, I don't know. I don't like having those conversations either. I know I'm not I'm not so, even saying it's it's a fault of mine. I I'm confused by this book. I'm gonna give uh-huh. my here's the recommendation that I'll give. Okay, if you are uh, 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 to me, I think if you're a grown-up – it's weird. This book feels to me mm-hmm. like young adult literature, mm-hmm. but it's not. No. I, I actually thought it was yeah. until something happened where I was like, oh. It, I'm very confused by this book, yeah. and I kind of don't understand why it was published in the form it's in. Yeah, it's, it is weird. <laughs> because it yeah. feels like it's written for children, uh-huh. and then they drop MFers all the time, mm-hmm. and uh, but then they also say weird things like testes a lot. Um, testies, really? They say a lot like of literally really that? obnoxious, technical, like correct terminology for things that really bothers me. But um, uh, they I they curse a lot. That. There's uh-huh. a lot of violence. Yep. There are a lot of adult themes like suicide, drug use. Mm-hmm. Uh, to the point that I'm like, they're probably not going to read this in a in a school. <laughs> I don't think so. I feel like it's not like books don't have like, you know, a rating system, but mm-hmm. I think technically this would be rated R. Yeah. Um, for language alone, at least, mm-hmm. and probably for a lot of the like imagery. Yeah. And, uh, so I can't recommend it for kids really. I know being the kind Do of kid that you're talking right to kids. No, no, no. I'm saying like from like a very technical standpoint, mm-hmm. like, uh, uh, this book should not be in mm-hmm. the the like young adult section of a bookstore. But is it? I don't know. Okay. But here's what I'm saying. If I were a kid, mm-hmm. I think I'd be really into this. Uh-huh. But I'm not a kid. Right. And so I'm mostly just kind of like, all right, this feels a little uh, too light uh-huh. and dopey. But I'm also confused because they try to have this hard edge periodically. Mm-hmm. 
And so I found myself constantly being tugged back and forth. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I just felt like it's a little sloppy. Mm -hmm. And it feels like it's carrying a lot of a uh, very modern thing that I've been noticing more and more. Mm -hmm. A lot of frantic energy and references. Just like nonstop being like, all right, now I want you to think of this yeah. old show that you used to see. Now we're going to switch it up. And instead of being written in a narrative style, now it's written like a script. Mm -hmm. Where it's I know. literally the characters, it'll just be like, Kristen, so what are you going to do? William, looking over at Kristen, I don't know. What are we going to do? It's not written as to say like, Kristen looked over and was concerned about, you know, her feelings of, of, of what they were about to do. William, what are we going to do? William looked around and eventually his eyes landed on Kristen. It's not written like yeah. that, but that happens randomly. Well, sometimes randomly. it is. Right. Yeah. And the, the sometimesiness of it, I don't yeah. like. It reminds me of Scott Pilgrim, the movie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. My two big comparisons are Scott Pilgrim and Ready Player One. Exactly my two references, yes. Kristen. Exactly my two references. Yeah. And I don't think I recommended Ready Player One Nor on this did show. I. Yeah. And I would not recommend Scott Pilgrim. I, I actually feel a little unfair comparing it to Scott Pilgrim because I've never seen all of Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. But I kept thinking of this as a movie so often. I was like, if this is a movie, it'd be Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. And Scott Pilgrim seemed like a lot. Yeah. Scott Pilgrim was too much for me. Yeah. It was too frantic. And mm -hmm. I all, ultimately walked away from that mm -hmm. thinking the same thing I think here. Yeah. I think – Somehow, mm -hmm. I'm too old for this. Mm -hmm. I think that this is written for modern youths and uh, not to toot my own horn. But, but I'm old. There's no other way I can say it. I don't think that I – in in many ways I do. Mm -hmm. But I think in some important ways concerning popular media, I don't fit the model of a modern mm -hmm. like young person. Mm -hmm. And I just don't enjoy the like reference-a-thon like – kind of like bland quippiness. Mm -hmm. um, so I cannot recommend this book for people that have similar interests to me. Mm -hmm. And it's also the very condescending thing that I do sometimes where I'm like, but if you like this kind of thing, mm -hmm. yeah, read it because you're, you're going to like it. I don't feel how this is any different from Ready Player One or Scott Pilgrim, mm -hmm. uh, it, tonally, like in terms of like who it might appeal to. But uh, it sure as hell is not me. Okay. I could not wait to put this book down. Huh, okay. And I was stunned to go online and see no one else saying what I'm saying. It makes me feel like a little prune man well, and a jerk. I'm, I also – that's not true because when I did research, there are a lot of negative – like what did you – Maybe we're just seeing the opposite. I literally then. just put in meddling kids. I and saw then, positive reviews a mundo. Put it in right now. All right. I'm telling you. Because on Goodreads and then other things, there were like low reviews. Yeah, but even the low reviews, like they don't – like it's got a 3.8 on Goodreads. I mean it's going to be boring to go through That's all That's pretty them. good. Yeah, but like there are – and NPR even further down. NPR gave it down. a positive review. Scooby-Doo fans will dig Cantera's meddling kids. I'm telling you. Well, maybe this is a different um So you have to scroll pretty far down to get to barnesandnoble.com where it has a 3 out of 5. Like I, I, I was seeing positive review you, after positive review. If you go on Goodreads, there are a ton of negative reviews. Okay, so. I didn't go. I, I don't yeah. really ever go on Goodreads. Yeah. I went on Amazon and stuff and read some other reviews from like publications. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I, boy, I just I yeah, okay, you're right. This person here, Chelsea, I've decided to put this one down for now, not giving it any stars, and I'm not trying to persuade anyone not to read it. I simply think it's not for me, and I'm struggling with a few of the characters. Time to move on to the next. Yeah, and they're a lot like that. Agreed. But I've seen so many people. I'm confused why anybody who likes Scooby-Doo likes this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not Scooby-Doo. I think it's it's distinctly not Scooby-Doo. It plays on your nostalgia mm -hmm. so that using a shorthand, you go like, oh, this character is like Velma. This character is like Shaggy. Mm -hmm. That guy's like uh, – I was going to say he's like Peter, but <laughs> his name is Peter. He's like I don't Fred. think any of them match up to the – people right do they we'll I get into it a that. little more in spoiler territory uh -huh. but i feel like except for that there's like a dog involved but i didn't draw any of those i think that at least the idea of the slot they're supposed to fill is there they don't always follow the exact same character traits uh -huh. we're introduced to a character and they the first way that she's described is that she used to lose her glasses all the time when they were kids and she was useless without them and i was like well then what you've oh, done remember. there, that simple act, mm -hmm. is making me conjure up the image of Velma in my mind, mm -hmm. and you're hoping that I will now feel the same affection I felt for Velma for this character. And the truth of it is, I never did. I, it never translated. And um, I don't know that that's always the intent with things like that. It's not, but I yeah. felt it in this. 
Okay. Um, I felt like the Scooby Dooiness was a shorthand mm-hmm. so that we'd feel about these people the affection we did for the originals, and I just never, I never mm-hmm. got that. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's end spoiler free territory. Okay, I'm gonna try not to be uh, blunt or crappy. Okay, good luck anything. with all that. Um, um, but I'm, uh, I was. I, d- I just didn't enjoy this book. I can't recommend it. If you enjoy the other things I've recommended, and that's part of the problem of a review, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Don't I, touch me. I'm not going to say that this book is com- a bad book. I'm not mm-hmm. going to say that. I'm going to say if you out there listening find that your interests have aligned with mine. Well, I would disagree with that, though, because your and my interests align, like, almost all the time. Yeah, but almost all the time. But so, so who's gonna who's listening out there who is one hundred percent I don't know. This may be the book then in the future that we point to to be like, no, that there's a line there somewhere mm-hmm. that like I'm on the other side of it from you. And I, I don't mean, know I think I, that we're probably gonna cause I I liked it, but I didn't love it. There are a lot of things I didn't like about it. So I think we're probably gonna agree on some points. Okay. So I don't even know if it's gonna be like that much of a line. Yeah. But um I feel like you're gonna bring me down to tell you the truth. I know, and I don't want to do that. I think you're gonna point out things and I'm gonna be like, yeah. What's the best you're way right. to what's the best way to do it then so that I can Well, I mean, bringing me down is gonna like ruin my night. Like do I, don't, to... I don't feel that strongly about this book, but I think that's what's gonna happen. Do you want me to 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 do all the bad and then start talking about the stuff I like so it goes no up at the I don't end. care no, no I don't care. it's not gonna hurt me I'm just saying I think that when you're t- like I liked this book but I'm not yeah I didn't love it so okay. I think when you start talking about it, I'm gonna be like huh yeah and I don't have a whole lot to, well maybe I will have things to point to that I'm like but what about this I don't know we'll see what happens okay all right well we're gonna end yeah. spoiler free time now I feel like your opinions are stronger than mine sometimes and you really like are persuasive. So, and then I and so that's what happens. Uh, okay, let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you're worried about spoilers for meddling kids, yeah. jump out now. Get out. We're about to spoil this book for you. Jump out. If I have it. not already spoiled it. <laughs> In a sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the grown-up members of the Blight and Summer Detectives Club bas- basically have PTSD from their case of the mansion, and the events of that day come out in drips and drabs because they've all tried to run from it or bury it. Basically, horrific lake monsters were pursuing them and they barely escaped, and Nate came across the Necronomicon, a book of spells that he read aloud from in a room with people's essential bodily salts all over the place, because the owner of the mansion, Damien De... How do you think you said? De Bowen? De De Boyne? De Boyne? De Boyne? I think it's De Bowen. Okay. De Bowen was a necromancer and was trying to raise the dead. It was all freaky and traumatic, and Andy, Carrie, and Nate have been living in various states of dysfunction ever since. Pete was so tormented that he took his own life. Carrie's been feeling like she needed to go back. Oh, that's not right. Andy's been feeling like she needed to go back and confront what they left there once and for all. So she gets the band back together who haven't seen each other in many years. She's always been in love with Carrie and it's a thing. They get back to Blighton Hills and honestly, it's fun. They receive a mysterious note to go to the lake. So they decide to head there right away and encounter totally sweet gross river monsters which they luckily fight off and even kill one to bring back to town to study. Carrie is a biologist. A cool detail about the book is that the town law enforcement is on their side. They're not meddling vigilantes. The sheriff lets them house the body in the morgue and helps provide supplies for them to search the mines under the Zoinks River for clues. Honestly, there's a lot going on. I'm getting mixed up. I'm going to need Will's help with this. They find out that in addition to the river monsters, there's a big daddy kind of demigod bad guy monster called Thagatu. Thagatoan or something? Thagatu. I don't know. Thagatu monsters. Thagatu. To worry about. Uh, De Bowen was apparently pretty interested in waking it up and ushering in a kind of Armageddon. They go back several times to talk to the descendant of Damien De Bowen, his daughter Dunia Dunya. Who, did you read this? Or I think it was just it? Dunia. I did both. I okay. listened to so, like yeah. the first half and uh-huh. then I read the second half. So you don't remember how they pronounce these things, Dunya, I guess? I don't think I got to her. Okay. Yeah. Uh, who wants nothing to do with him. Seemingly. In the end, after lots of investigating and scrapes with the river monsters, they find out that Dunya is actually Damien de Bowen himself. He's kept himself alive for at least 150 years through sorcery and I guess had a sex change so he could pass as his own daughter and people wouldn't see, be suspicious that he's old as fuck. Honestly, it's confusing, but she wants to release the monster because she's seen everything else or because she's seen everything else. How about a little apocalypse as a nightcap? (sighs) They steal the Necronomicon and head for Carrie's aunt's house, the headquarters of all their summers of fun, and do a spell that sucks up the lake monsters that have been pursuing them and quiets the (laughs) Thagatun. They're safe for now. 
Nate isn't sure the spell worked exactly the way it was supposed to because it required five humans to complete and they had for this, this, this was terrible. And they had four <laughs> humans and a dog. I hated this. But wait, Nate has suspected something. Does the dog house the soul of a human? Of course he does. And does the dog talk to Nate, explaining that when Nate uttered that spell as a child, he released the human soul to be transported into the dog? Of course he does. Guys, I really did like this, but I'm exhausted. I need to talk to Will, to Will about this to fill in any other gaps for you. What am I missing? Oh, Andy and Carrie are basically together, but I guess haven't consummated it? It was a detail that seemed like a minorly big deal. Oh, I didn't even tell you that Peter has been haunting Nate either as a ghost or as a hallucination the whole time. Shit. Okay, taking it to the convo. Conversation is the best summary. Um, that's the way they all became the Blighton Bunch. Oh, the God, end. God, I forgot that you had done that. I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well crafted. That was a slow. Thank b- you. Thank <laughs> you. It was burn. worth it, right, guys? Yeah, that was great. Paid off. Um, real, real quick, just because it's gonna bother me, Kristen. Yeah. Yes. Where are we at? We're at twenty minutes, forty five seconds. Okay. The way your bag is oriented, <laughs> it's really making me laugh. <laughs> And it's been, it's been hard for me to look at this and not interrupt our recording. That's so funny. Look at it. <laughs> it's funny. Right it's person. so funny. Sorry. I, its mouth looks like Oogie Boogie. It does look like Oogie Boogie. I couldn't stop looking at it. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. All right. 20 minutes, 45 seconds. All right. I just had to get that out. That's really funny. (laughs) Should we put that on Instagram or something? No. I I mean, it doesn't really make sense, right? No, it doesn't. No. Um, I I can't look at it. (laughs) It's going to make me laugh. (laughs) Don't look at it. It's watching us. Um, Oh, God. Okay. Okay. From a basic, basic, basic premise, I think yes. this is really cool. Okay. Uh, that it's like. Don't, f- you know, I've said bad precedent for saying that you're going to sway me. Say whatever you're going to say. Don't feel like you have to like. To alter it? Yeah, just okay. do it. It's fine. I think it's. It, William, it's my stuff. I think it's legitimately cool. Okay. And I, it actually makes me think of the good parts of Stephen King's It. That it's like these kids. Yeah. Uh, 13 Mm-mm. years ago when they were 13, mm-hmm. uh, went to this mansion and solved a mystery like Scooby-Doo. Yeah, the timing is funny. Yeah. The the guy was dressed like a big salamander mm-hmm. and they unmasked him. His name is Mr. Wickles. Mm-hmm. And he Wickley. went to- Wickley, sure. <laughs> and he ended up going away to jail. Yeah. And now they're older, they're grown up, and there's something about that big, that big last case mm-hmm. that has been bothering them all this time. And they're going to go that back and it turns out that- they were children. They didn't plumb the depths of that mystery. There's mm-hmm. a lot more going on there. And it's the real supernatural. Yeah. Like Scooby-Doo, you're going to unmask the the old guy who's mm-hmm. just trying to get rich. Mm-hmm. But uh-oh, not like Scooby-Doo. There's a real monster out there. Yeah. I like that. I mm-hmm. like that a lot. I mm-hmm. even like the playing with types mm-hmm. um, that I do think uh, uh, to – they don't they don't play with it too much, which I think is good. I think it's the right thing to do. I think they've drawn a – Direct line from Velma to Carrie. Okay, she was in, into science, and she was okay. the bookwormy yeah. one, mm-hmm. right? And she would, and she would lose her glasses. That's going too far. I didn't remember that. That leaves me to just be like, okay, well then, who are the other ones that are in there? Well, Which I guess is maybe Fred was Peter. I that, Fred that did occur Peter, to me because he's Peter, like the hot one with the ascot, and he was the quote unquote leader. Yep. Uh, however, in this case, uh, Peter, 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 little leader. <laughs> Yeah, as they say. Yeah. He went on to be a little movie star guy, mm-hmm. and then he overdosed on drugs and died. Mm-hmm. And then they in- inject into that later on that that was suicide. Right. Because he's been tormented by this uh, this old case. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I kind of like that, too. Yeah. He appears as some form of apparition, whether mm-hmm. he's literally supernatural or a hallucination, mm-hmm. to, I guess, the Scooby of the gang, mm-hmm. Nate – and here's why I'll say – or uh, Shaggy. Okay, Shaggy. okay. Yeah, so to say, I think I can draw a clearer parallel to Scooby. <laughs> now, the, the, <laughs> the dog is that guy, yeah. right? Uh, Nate has been in uh, uh, an asylum yep. for, uh, you know, uh, much of the past yeah. 13 years. Yeah. And he's He put seeing, himself in. He was, he self-admitted. Yeah, weird, mm-hmm. weird thing about that too. They try to break him out because they're getting mm-hmm. the gang back together. And he was like, yeah, well, no big deal because I self-admitted. Yeah. And they're like, but you can't self 
unadmit. Yeah. And they have to break him out? I know. I was confused by that. If you self-admit, yeah. I mean, maybe if you maybe that's maybe, a real thing. Well, I was about to say, I mean, maybe if you like self-harm or something, if if you've proven that you're a danger to yourself maybe. or others, maybe I have no idea. Uh, it just felt to me like a an excuse yeah. to build in an action. Well, but scene. again, like okay, so I was trying to remember. I think we've read other books that have action scenes. Like, I mean, again, I guess Ready Player One. Uh-huh. Um, I was thinking the Gunslinger. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I just don't like that. It it doesn't like I don't want to read like pages of action. It just makes me think that this should be a yeah. comic book. I think the I main reason like I think this... comic book is because the cover of this book is so cool. I think if it'd be cool art style to see like replicated pa- panel. Yeah, after panel. I mean it's yeah. awesome. Like just Google meddling kids and see the see what the cover looks like. I think if it weren't for that comic book. More, comic book wouldn't occur to me that much but it just seems like it should be a visual thing it does i I guess people do like reading things like that like there are western books you know i mean yeah but but usually character is part of it you know like usually it will be that like the way that you're fighting is an indication of what your character is Mm -hmm. like or you might be talking while you're fighting Mm -hmm. usually i don't think the fight scenes in books maybe we just haven't read that many maybe i've never read that many Mm -hmm. But usually they don't go on for paragraph after paragraph just being like she swept kicked him. But he got up and then he embedded the axe in the other monster right behind him. A lot of it. It was poorly written. It does. It didn't give you a sense of place. It yeah. didn't. It didn't anchor you to anything. So it would just. I be just like, figured that eventually they're gonna get out of the mine, right? And they will have had a fight. Right. So I would kind of like flip through. And that's not a good sign. No. Um, but I don't even know if that I it's not a good sign but again that could be preference for me because I just really don't like stuff like that. I find it like legit boring. I think this would make more sense in you're right, some visual form, whether mm-hmm. that's a graphic novel or a mini series or mm-hmm. a movie. Yeah, it does not work as a book at yeah. least the way that it's written. Mm-hmm. Cuz it is boring and it's, it's confusing. It's got movie written all over it. It feel feels like, like you're just is... spinning around in a room yeah. while they're telling you the action. I can't visualize it f- as fast as he writes it. I'm not mm-hmm. able to picture what he's got in his own head. Yeah. It doesn't translate. And that's mm-hmm. not good. No. Um but yeah, I felt like the fact that they had to break Nate out of the asylum was just an excuse to have a big action thing mm-hmm. occur. Yeah. Uh even if that is a real rule that you can't you can check in but you can't check out on your mm-hmm. own, like all right, that wasn't communicated well. Yeah. Um but I guess he's the shaggy. <laughs> but to to Nate. Yeah, to Nate. Yeah, I guess. He should probably have known that. <laughs> yeah. right? But also Nate's last name is Rogers. Mm-hmm. Uh Shaggy's name is Norval Rogers. And that's our last name. Uh, and it's our last name, yeah. Huh. So I'm thinking, okay, well, there's your Shaggy reference. Uh-huh. Um, not to mention the Zoinks River. Yep. Which felt out of place. It felt very out of place. Zoinks River stuff. And they don't, so it's not I like they do that stuff. all the time. Yeah. Really, this book for me was like whiplash inducing mm-hmm. where I'm like, what are we doing? Are we being quippy and reference filled or are we being really serious and edgy about it? Yeah. Because now our uh, final character to round out the gang mm-hmm. is basically the primary character of the book, mm-hmm. Andy. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is a military kid. Mm -hmm. She is tough as nails. Uh, she is in love with Carrie, Mm -hmm. uh, the bookwormy one. Mm -hmm. And she opens up the book and immediately within pages had me hating this book. Mm -hmm. She, for the, at least the beginning and it changes later, feels like a villain. Mm -hmm. I thought she's weird. I thought maybe this book would be about members of the Scooby gang never getting back together again. Mm -hmm. One of them has become like a psychopathic murderer <laughs> because she tracks down Mr. Wickley. Yeah. The guy that dressed up like a salamander 13 years ago. He's just been let out of jail. Mm-hmm. She tracks him down and immediately kicks a door open and slams his head against the wall. He's like a 60 something year old man who like his crime was dressing up like a monster and scaring kids. Mm-hmm. Just like, like all the, like, the goofball memes about Scooby-Doo where they yeah. catch the guy at the end. They're like, all right, we're going to put you away now for dressing up like Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> that's your crime. <laughs> that's what you did. Um, he went away for technically kidnapping, mm-hmm. which they make a point of saying he probably could have gotten reduced uh-huh. because all he did was lock a kid in a room. Yeah. Um, so the point is, why was he not willing to argue against those stronger um, like uh, crimes mm-hmm. and go away for 13 years of his life? Uh-huh. There must be some big hidden conspiracy. I th- that's cool. That's yeah. a great idea. Love that idea. Mm-hmm. But she slams his head against the wall and is like really violent and abusive to now what I'm picturing to be an old man who's helpless. Well, no, but also he carried the newspaper clip of – 
when they caught him and everything forever and he was like plotting to go back and or like to get them no he wasn't yeah he was he was like looking over it and he was all like yeah he was upset about it but he also burns it and wants nothing to do with it and then when she has his head pinned against the wall he's pretty sinister when he has she has his head pinned against the wall she's like what is it what were you hiding Mm -hmm. and he starts speaking in tongues and giving her information and then she drops him on the floor and storms away Mm -hmm. and i was confused i was like you're done uh, one, I thought immediately you were going to murder him and maybe you, maybe this was going to be a book about you going around and cleaning up loose ends or taking revenge on these people that were part of this abusive childhood. It felt adventurous at the time, but now I'm an adult and I realize, no, these were grown ass people terrorizing me. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, she's going to leave him alive. Oh, but also he's telling her stuff and she's walking away from him. So she doesn't really care about this information because uh-huh. it seems like he was becoming an open book. Never revisited, by the way, just yeah. leaves and goes out to track down Carrie, who she has been in love with all this time but has not seen. Mm-hmm. We are told that Peter, the basic leader of the group, has been dead for two years. Mm-hmm. And immediately I start going, why are we being told this story right now? It seems like it's because finally Wickley is out of jail. But that can't be entirely it because, like I said, they're never going to revisit him and even when he started giving out information, it didn't matter. Well, it seems like that was the starting point because why else would she have – it seems like she started with him. So she wanted to get some information from him and then move on. Later in the book, the main villain of the story tells us that the death of Peter was the event that started to bring everyone together. But that happened two years ago. But that I think she means like behind the scenes. Like there were weird like forces that were starting to – you know, like – the universe was bringing that. That's what I took from it. Maybe, maybe that's not a like very the, satisfying like answer. Were like to me. cogs started to like you know go into motion. Then the story should have started happen. two years ago. She should have tra- started to track people down two years ago. I, it doesn't. It doesn't. It never felt right that like the story's starting now. I also think it's weird, and this is not a complaint about the book. This is just like a, a weird judgmenty thing. Mm-hmm. They were thirteen when they did all this stuff, and they talk about how they they like solved multiple multiple mm-hmm. crimes. 13 feels too young to me. Uh, it's so young. Yeah. It is absurdly young. Yes. Scooby-Doo and the gang always struck me as being late teens, early yeah, 20s. Totally. Yeah, late teens. I kind of think that... Uh, Perhaps early 20s. Tw- okay, yeah. I kind of think that either the events that happened to them when they were 13 happened like 25 years ago. I think that they needed to be older now mm-hmm. and really have been like haunted their whole lives Why? later in the book. Cause it does, I don't buy 13 years Uh huh. and now they're 26 and being like, I wasted half my life. Like numerically. Yes, uh-huh. that is true. But there's something about the weight of being like, and now I'm 26 <laughs> <laughs> that I just don't it just doesn't and that's part of what makes me feel like this feels really immature to me. Uh-huh. Um to be all this upset and even the demon lady at the end is going to be like they're they're one of the things is they're like we've been cursed all this time. Mm-hmm. We've suffered under a curse. We're having nightmares. We think that we think we're seeing demons sometimes in our dreams. Uh and we've been really moody and upset. Uh-huh. And the bad guy at the end, she goes, "I just described the symptoms of any person in their 20s." And I'm like, one, that's a little irritating to me Uh that we're just going to deal with like the generational ennui (laughs) of being in your 20s. It's like being haunted by a demon. And two, like, yeah, you're right. People in their 20s can sometimes be pretty immature, huh? We've been following a pretty immature group of people. Uh They haven't been haunted that long. I, I, I don't, I just don't buy it. I never felt like it was true. If these people were older, if they'd suffered for longer, uh-huh. I would have bought into it more. And some mm-hmm. of that's probably like, if anybody out there listening is younger than us right now, you might even be thinking it right now and you're three years older than me. It's kind of, I hated it when I was younger to be told like you're young. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just, it's no, not always true. years seems plenty long to be haunted by something a long time yeah but i just also i don't know i guess i don't buy the entire concept Mm -hmm. that they were that they felt haunted at all i don't Mm -hmm. know why they felt like there was something left unsaid like i don't know why they thought the 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 average demons of just being like a struggling young person Uh are like oh that's definitely a demon 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, but they didn't think that until they started like looking into all this stuff. Each of them individually in their lives didn't think that they were haunted by a demon. No, they did because at when? a certain point when Andy tracks down Carrie and they see each other for the first time in a long time, mm-hmm. first of all, Carrie is a waitress yeah. and there are guys that are catcalling her. Yeah. Andy kicks the door open and describes this super uber nut, nut crunch punch. kick yeah. that she can do Yep, that – you know when you hold your testes and they kind of wiggle out of your fingers? Ew, okay, I do remember that. Don't worry. What I do, they don't wiggle away. And I'm like, what are you – what? What are you <laughs> talking about right now? She spends five minutes describing her nut kick uh-huh. to the point that I'm like, I'm like these cat calling guys should just be like – Let's just leave. Shut up. <laughs> Fight us or whatever you're going to do. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Honestly. I was like, this is, she is the villain of the story. She is so obnoxious. And it's not the point that she's obnoxious. We're supposed to think that's cool. And once I realized that, I was like, oh no. But anyway, she gets Carrie. They sleep in the same bed at night. And then Carrie has a dream mm-hmm. that Andy is reaching around her mm-hmm. and putting her hand in her pants, but she's got a demon hand. Mm-hmm. And then she wakes up from the nightmare and Andy starts going, it's okay. I'm real. I'm real. I was like, she That's thought she like, wasn't. What are you saying? William, and then they're I like, I've been having them too. Stuff. No, no, no. It's foreshadowing that doesn't go anywhere. And that's not. Th- I'm sorry. That doesn't play well in a book, in a, in, a, in a mystery story. You can't just set up threads and then at the end, like I get it. Some I of it's just like a nightmare. No, it felt distinct. I can't believe you can read it any other way. It felt distinctly like a setup that like we've been having the same. We're being, you know. Tracked down by a, a, a demon. I didn't get that that at all. Pardon the interruption. To run our show, Book Club Schmook Club needs help from our listeners. You can donate to the show by going to patreon.com slash talkbomb, where you'll be able to choose a monthly donation that you feel comfortable with. As a thank you from us, you'll instantly get access to all of our bonus between book shows, which don't stay in our main feed. Every time a new one comes out, we bump the last one on over to Patreon. There are dozens and dozens of secret shows that you haven't had access to if you're not a donor. Doesn't that inflame your FOMO? That's fear of missing out. It's an acronym. You'll also have access to each new bonus show as it comes out and early access to all of our book reviews. We load them onto Patreon as soon as we record them. So our donors get all of our episodes days earlier than they show up on the public feeds. Again, going to patreon.com slash talk bomb and setting up a donation makes that happen. And we thank you so much for it. If you would prefer to individually purchase our bonus episodes, you can find them in our shop at talkbomb.com, where we also have stickers and bookmarks for sale. We would also really appreciate your support by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Positive reviews help other people find our show by making podcast apps more likely to list us. It also helps validate us to people cruising around looking for something to check out. So leaving us a review is like paying it forward twofold, since it helps us and it turns someone else onto something you enjoy. And we do hope you enjoy the show. So let's get back to it. Well, I didn't like it. Yeah. I also didn't like the the ghost hand reach around. I thought it was weird. And seriously, for her to be well, like, I'm weird. real. I'm real. You know how like when somebody you know has a nightmare and you just start reinforcing them? <laughs> you just start you're real? letting them know that you're real. Yeah. You know that thing of that? <laughs> yeah. You know, everyone does that. Which is like, I'll leave that as just an indication of how the language in this is like. The dialogue is really weird. Uh, actually, at one point on the road trip, somebody needs to poop. And the other one goes, really, again? And they go, thanks a lot, Dr. Sphincter of the Rectal Police. Something like that. (laughs) I kind of remember that. Something like that. And again, just like, what am I reading? (laughs) Uh, They track down uh, – I'm not not trying to go scene by scene. I'm just trying to go through some things. Uh Uh, When they track down Nate to break him out of the mental asylum, they give him a penguin to squeeze so that Mm -hmm. their dog, uh, Tim – Yeah. Uh, who is the grandson of Sean, who was yes. the original dog from 13 years ago. Yes. And literally every time they said one of those names, I was like, I thought his name was Nate. I keep forgetting the dog has a human Me name. Me too. I did the same oh. thing. Yep. The dog who up until this point has just been like, they'll describe Tim the dog as being like, he looked over stoically and was and seemed to be paying attention. I'm like, hmm. okay, good, good way to handle having the dog as a character. Yeah. Uh, the dog tracks down the penguin. Grabs Nate and they go flying through. They've like tied yeah. a rope to Nate and they're dragging him through the building and talking about it. He's like flying down staircases without touching barely a step on the way down. I'm like, 
This would kill a person. So, the, okay, book heightened reality. Got it. Heightened reality. Yeah. But no, that's also not true. Uh, then Tim is dragged outside and um, – Wait. How is this not heightened reality? Quick pause. Well, no. I mean like like uh, not zany madcap – physics Mm -hmm. to where like you can tug someone down apparently you can tug someone down like two flights of stairs and drag them through a parking lot on a rope and they're totally fine but also later on like actual violence is portrayed realistically that's Mm -hmm. what i mean it's like there's a everything there is no nothing is set in stone in this book ever uh but anyway but who gives a fuck what do you mean? Why like, Why would you not give a fuck? Don't you just like go with it at all? Just if, like, all right, I'm reading a stupid book. Well, that's what it is. If I were enjoying the book, of course I would. Yeah. The fact that I'm not enjoying the book makes – You need to pick ev- apart every thread. This this violence was realistic and this was one wasn't. I feel like that like leads to liking it less. No, that's not picking it apart. That's in the moment being like I never know what I'm supposed to be thinking or feeling uh-huh. or anything. It's It's not me wanting to be like – and I, I understand. I understand that that's how it sounds right now. I understand completely. Mm-hmm. But there must be other things that you have not enjoyed in your life that you're like, yeah. Well, this didn't. This just never made sense. This never made sense. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's just what it is. We just have to. If you liked it and you were able to go for it, cool. When you're not this kind of stuff, it's that's like totally well, true. I have like no idea. More things that you don't like when you don't like something. It makes it feel like he never had a distinct idea of what this world was, what these people are like. Mm-hmm. Are they really serious about all of this, or do they not take it really seriously? Are we going to portray the violence realistically or not? Those are the kind of tonal things that are like one of the pri- for me one of the primary umbrellas mm-hmm. of this kind of storytelling, where I need to know what the stakes are. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to tell me you can pull a guy down flat lights of stairs and like stuff that would like shatter his spine. Yeah. Then I shouldn't be worried about the violence, but I should be. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yeah. Makes sense. I'm not trying to pick it apart. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand what world we're in. Mm -hmm. And I never did. Yeah. Uh, But anyway, the entire reason I just said that is because they're like, Oh good. We finally got you out of there. Let's go on this road trip. Yeah. And then the dog for the first time goes like, and I saved the penguin. Cause he, Ran through the house to get the squeaky penguin toy. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, no, we're going to get like dog talking. <laughs> Wait, did that – he said that? He said that. That was during the audiobook portion, which uh-huh. by the way, I don't recommend the book. I really don't recommend the audio. I book. actually on purpose oh, my God. read the book because I had a sense that it was, this was going to be a little bit annoying from the description of the book. I was like, you know, I think I can roll with this, but like this sounds – like this could be kind of like annoying, like – character things i i said it the zoinks for everything really tipped me off i was like there's oh. gonna be dorky stuff in this so i was like i can't listen to the audiobook of this because listening to character voices and things like that is not a good idea in this case they just need to exist in my head L- legitimately maybe the worst audiobook i've ever heard in my life really the Ooh. woman who reads it what it was to start at least another mm-hmm. when i switched to reading it i was like yeah. okay okay i feel i feel better about this but when you hear some of the things, the way that she Ugh. reads them yeah. in like this very like sing-songy children's book way, mm-hmm. it emphasizes how – Like all the annoying things. It was infuriating. Ugh. So, uh, uh, okay. When they started talking about how they can't fly across the country, mm-hmm. they're going from East Coast to West Coast, mm-hmm. they have this really long explanation of the fact that – um, Andy can't fly. She's been arrested and she escaped from jail. Mm-hmm. Can't fly. She can't get through an airport. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, cool. They're going to set, this is why we're on the road. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a road trip. Yeah. It's like a chapter later, they're all yeah. the way across the country and a week has passed. Yeah. And I'm like, what is, what is this book? <laughs> I was like, it kept making me excited for stuff and then yanking it away. Uh-huh. I thought it was going to be like a cool, weird thing about the, the Scooby gang being evil. No. I thought it was going to be a cool road trip. We're going to see monsters on the way to our big final mystery. No. We just immediately go to the town and it's been devastated. And then I start being able to get into it. Mm-hmm. Here is where I start being able to get into it. Mm-hmm. My boner is completely wilted. Go ahead. Um, I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. It's a, a big mansion. I think that's mm-hmm. cool. They go into the catacombs and see coffins of dead bodies that have been that there forever. Sweet. That's cool. They find I out. I wish I could get those gold ingots. Ingots? Ingots? I want one of those. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's like instantly rich. 
Yeah, but they also say shit where they're like, how much do you think this is worth? And someone goes, the entire GDP of Majorca. I'm like, how do you know that? <laughs> Shut up. How do She's you know that? She's a smart one. That? I bet Carrie oh, said that. I don't remember who said it. <laughs> it had to be one her. of the things that i thought There's was no way <laughs> she's a smart these one these characters say insane insane person things that are supposed to be so cool <laughs> and i've heard them a million times at the end they go through like a mine cart and they're like welcome to the super monster buster rocket mine cart and one of them goes i don't remember that which i don't i don't know why that would be a response well, and the other one it- goes i just invented it and they gun it and i'm like because they had names for like the maneuvers that they would do. So they'd be like, to get this monster, like, pull the rug whammy switcheroo. And then they would like do something to a rug. It was like a move that they had coordinated. So whoever said that was joking that they have done, like, we're going to do the mine cart loop de loop. And then that's why they were like, I don't know that one. Yeah, but that's also like, are they old and haunted? <laughs> or are they like <laughs> really into it and being. G. Willikers. A little bit of both. Also, when they were 13, it was the late 70s. Yeah. Now it's 1990. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, the villain also goes like, you haven't been haunted by demons. Your problem has always been Generation X. Oh, I know. It's like, oh. <laughs> I know. That was tough. <laughs> Oh, God. And they still don't feel like 90s people. At one point, uh, Andy does her super nut crunch kick to the villain who is now a, uh, a trans person. There were, there were some really weird gender things in this book that I didn't really understand. Which, like, I guess that's one of those things where it's like modern day, like, oh, kudos to you because it feels modern that all this stuff is in there. That's not a very 90s thing. Yeah. And, uh, then Andy does her nut crunch kick and it doesn't – it works because it's a kick, but it doesn't work entirely. Yeah. And uh, the villain, Dunia, yeah. goes like, what was that for? And Oh, I know. Andy's response is, I hoped you still had your birth genitalia. Yeah, yeah. Which is the kind of boring, gutless things that people say now. <laughs> We're like, I'm not very – like, I'm the way that I speak – for sure, I'm not like a PC, uh, like anti PC person, but like the very technical jargon. She's talking about people's testes and says, "I was hoping you had your birth genitalia." That's a very distinctly 2017 way to speak. Well, and no, it's I mean, also maybe not. Her point was that it. She's distinguishing the birth one from the later one. Like that's the point. But you say, "I thought you still had balls." That's what you say. That's what you say. Yeah. Especially if you're fighting someone, and it's definitely what you would say in the 90s. It this is delicate. 1990. Yeah. Uh, when, when Andy admits her love for Carrie, Carrie goes like, uh, no, I'm sorry, I just don't feel that way about, about yeah, other I don't girls. Get what was going on? And Andy goes, but you haven't tried it yet. And Carrie says this, I haven't tried skydiving yet either, and I know I wouldn't like it. And then there's a beat, and she goes, I'm sorry, that was harsh. And I was like, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. That's the sort of really the it's like it's tame. Well, it could be harsh if somebody just said they loved you. It's tame and emotionless and clean and boring. I don't know. I just I, I just don't care. It doesn't feel human. It feels like boring young modern kids. But none of this feels human. Like the fact that the the weird thing, I guess that's part of the deal with like the fact that they talk so strangely and stuff like that because the structure is so weird to the book where all of a sudden it'll be like Kristen, blah, 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 William, blah, blah, blah. Like it doesn't feel human. It does feel like some sort of weird show or something. So I'm not expecting human moments really. What are we supposed really to th- bother me? What are we supposed to think? I don't know. I really don't know. I can't At first, tell if I- we're supposed to care or if we're supposed to not care. And if we're supposed about, to not care, I also don't like that. <laughs> about what? Like, what the, do you mean? Like, the care? People or anything? <laughs> I don't know. The overall mystery. If you tell me the mystery in a few sentences, that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. If you tell me this premise in a few sentences, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, the actual experience mm-hmm. of, of getting into this story, it is, it, it never took shape. Mm-hmm. I never knew what I was supposed to feel at any given moment or anything. Mm hmm. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, something about the structure of it. Oh, at first I thought the structure was going to be just from Andy's perspective. Like the weird thing of it being like script like for a second, because she said this throwaway line at one point about how life didn't turn out 
like a movie or a TV show or something like that. And then I thought that she was like structuring things in her mind the way you would see, because they even reference the audience sometimes. It's like yeah. the, it's really weird. And I thought that was just gonna be from Annie's perspective because it was like a weird mental tick that she had. And it's not, it's just no. a weird style yeah. thing. They break the Strange. fourth wall yeah. sometimes. Mm-hmm. They yeah, switch it's weird. to script format sometimes. Yeah. It feels like, um, just a wishy washy attempt to be stylized mm-hmm. and, uh, modern keep you on your toes Mm -hmm. and like well we don't have to be we don't have to hold down to one thing yeah like forget the old conventions we can do whatever we want Mm -hmm. and uh i feel like that's almost a phase that people go through yeah it yeah it's i was i don't want to just get flat out insulting uh young younger people uh who write books Uh sometimes i've noticed Uh like dave eggers Uh uh-huh he wrote a heartbreaking work of staggering the genius. the exact same thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. And just all of a sudden you'll turn a page. There's a diagram. Yeah. There's just like weird. Oh, it's, it's quirky. And then they yeah. usually, most of those people usually then grow up a little bit and start writing somewhat more. Like maybe the actual mm-hmm. narrative is unconventional, mm-hmm. but the, the writing style will have a consistent tone. Yeah. And, uh, this feels like a very young person, like, Going through that phase of like, well, it can be whatever I want it to be at any given moment. Mm -hmm. But it also felt to me like, I think you wanted this to be a movie. I think when it's in script format, Uh it's because it's easier to write that way. And you don't have to write those. You don't have to fill in uh, those gaps. You can say, Carrie, angrily. Well, what are you thinking, Nate? Nate, to Carrie, I'm thinking whatever I want. You don't have to, you don't have to fill in and explain why she's angry. You can just say she says it angrily. Or is it a play on the Scooby Doo thing since that is a TV show? I mean, that's right. But we don't, we don't experience, I, I see what you're saying, but yeah. we don't experience Scooby Doo in that way. So mm-hmm. it can't evoke that feeling. Yeah, but it's like kind of meta. Like this is kind of based on a TV show and this is a script. I'm referencing the audience and what it's <sighs> referencing stuff like that. Yeah. See, the thing that I think that they really should have done. I can't done, think that you're like, well, this is easier to do something to do it like that. No, no, no. It's, and I, I feel, I, I agree with you, but I think that if that may have been a format he wrote in mm-hmm. and this is speculation, like total mm-hmm. speculation, maybe 100% not right, mm-hmm. but it sounds, uh, uh, plausible to me a little bit to be like, this existed in a different form previously. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it was fun to be like, Oh, when we're going back and forth, fast dialogue. Yeah. Like you can just bam, 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 by going carry this, Nate, that mm-hmm. Andy, that, and so it, and then it feels also like it's being sort of like quirky to do it that way. So mm-hmm. let's just do that sometimes. And it also happens to be easier. Yeah. That's more what I mean. Not like he was like, let me find a way to cut a corner. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it, they sh- Scooby Doo should have existed in this world. I think these kids should have watched Scooby Doo. Mm-hmm. I think that that would at least inject it with some more of that flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Um, you, you opened think. something that you were going to refer to. <laughs> It's so dumb. It has nothing to do with the book itself. It has to do with me reading something wrong. Okay. Okay. So I, I was just kind of zoning out a little bit, reading. I'm reading something. I got really confused by what it meant, and it's not what it was. All right. So this is the sentence that I that I read in my mind. Okay. Carrie checked the painting, then looked across the room at an oatmeal shield on the wall. It's an ornamental shield. <laughs> And I just <laughs> took out the N, and it does line up perfectly. Oatmeal. An oatmeal. If you just take out R N M N T, and you have to rearrange a couple. Or no, letters, the T. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, oatmeal is in ornamental. Yeah, yeah. It's perfect. An oatmeal shield. I was like, what? That's awesome. That's all. Um, something that I thought was really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, the idea that um, Nate sees an apparition of Peter. Mm -hmm. thought that was awesome. Mm -hmm. I think that was a really clever way to twist up the formula of it being a group of friends investigating this mystery. Mm -hmm. I kept wanting them to say, yes, he is a ghost. Yes, me too. So was he actually a ghost? We don't know. I know. I don't think he was now. They don't like to peg things down. I know. I kind of don't think he was now because he's not in in the end really or anything, right? He just disappears. He just disappears. So I don't think so. I would have loved that so much. Mm -hmm. It would be such a fun, fun idea to be like, this is like the Scooby gang, except one of them's a ghost. Totally. One of them's an army kid. One of them's been in an asylum and the other one is eh, Velma. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Well, she's like hot Velma though, which is, I guess that's kind kind of redundant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, no, I'm kidding. Velma was always the frumpy one. Velma was the original Barb. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> How dare you? I think they're beautiful. I'm just saying Carrie's supposed to be like all bombshelly. Right. I don't think you would say that Velma or Barber bombshells exactly. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. So uh, I think that that's a really cool grouping. Mm-hmm. And I really just wished that like something would happen. Some weirdo magic would happen. Yeah. So that Andy and Carrie could also see Me too. See I kept ghost. waiting for Neil to see him. And the three of them are friends with a ghost. Yeah, that'd be they still awesome. got their dog. And that's yeah. awesome. It's really fun. But yeah. no, they continually waffle mm-hmm. about, are you a figment of my imagination? Mm-hmm. Do you only know, I know the things? I know. What's the point of that to go that back I and know. forth like that for Are you my Tyler so Durden? Yeah. Um, or are you a ghost? You might be. Or are you a demon – Mm-hmm. That has been haunting me this whole time, trying to get me to go back to that mansion. Mm-hmm. And they never land on anything. And then eventually, we just never see him again. And then why does Peter every once in a while have worms coming out of his mouth? Just for fun? Yeah, which also irritates me. He's just being me. scary? Yeah, because it feels like, again, it feels like uh, the 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 author just gets bored periodically. And then we'll just be like, oh, and th- he's got bugs in his face. All right, don't worry about that anymore. All right, now this is happening. Now we're going to play this word game for a while, but it doesn't matter. All right, we're going to drive cross country. It's going to take a long time. All right, we made it. <laughs> like, just like, it feels like it's, they never linger on anything. They never explain anything. Mm-hmm. So uh, I thought that was really awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, like really awesome. Uh, but they never did anything with it. They go to the island. They find out that they've been part of this big like conspiracy that they need all, everyone's blood mm-hmm. and stuff to fulfill this. That was sweet thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. And then they actually do it. Mm-hmm. They they resurrect this gigantic, um, like eldritch monster that's been mm-hmm. in the lake. Thicka-tun. Yeah. Thicka-tucka. Thicka-tucka. And it rises up and stuff. And they mm-hmm. fight the the bad guy who's now a bad lady. Mm-hmm. Uh. A uh, quick annoying thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything about the way she speaks. Yeah. And how she sucks on a lollipop. Oh, yeah, I know. The entire time. And then in a false. She keeps a, she keeps a lollipop in a cigarette case, which is much worse. So much. Yeah. <laughs> so much worse. Much than- worse. <laughs> I forgot about Much that. Much worse detail. than just a lollipop or just a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> to keep your, your lollipops in a cigarette case. Oof. She also at one point. Um, is talking about how 13 years ago she started this ritual. Mm-hmm. She wants to finish it now. And she found out, oh, if you start it, you need the same participants. That's mm-hmm. why there's this grand plot to get the kids to come back. Yeah. And then she says in a falsetto voice, in a sing-song voice, ooh, look at me. I'm the Necronomicon. Oh, yeah. You have to follow my stupid rules. I was like, oh. <laughs> I know. Oh. It feels like um, Moriarty. Yeah. From Sherlock, but way more annoying. Yeah, completely. She's really annoying. And without that cool I side liked her where she's like we, crazy. When, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, I liked her when she was just like a crazy lady in yeah. the house. I was like, oh, I like this character. Yeah, I liked her when they're like, oh, she's then, the last living yeah. uh, a, a descendant yeah. of this old sorcerer guy. Like, yeah. Sweet. Cool. Totally. Cool. I also like that they kept calling him a sorcerer. Love sorcerer. I like yeah. necromancer a lot. Me too. I love the Necronomicon. They, I love the Necronomicon. Um, they talk about, uh, uh, so Peter, mm-hmm. who killed himself slash overdosed. Do we know? I don't know. I'm not sure. Does anything have a definitive answer in this book? I don't know. So I, I just didn't think about it. They find out. They find out. They think that Peter's behind it all. They think that maybe he's not really dead, which is also but like for like a second. Like that's not like a running theory. No, it's not. But when they land on it, they're they're really like, oh my god. Yeah. It is. I know it is. And I'm like, did no one go to his funeral two years ago? Yeah. What? Wasn't there a reason though? Like they didn't. What? What, what led them to that? Because they think handwriting no they eventually find out that it was his handwriting but i don't think they ever thought that i think someone posits it and they all just agree that's it <laughs> i think it had to do with handwriting so, so yeah yeah yeah, it did because she because carrie still had the note that peter wrote to yes. her in his in her pocket so yes. yeah you're absolutely so right. All right, thank god i mean so that would you know the, uh, i would think that then sure. the handwriting matched up yeah yeah. So we're they, dealing with like resurrecting people from the dead. I've been getting notes from a weird thing that matched the note from my. Well, but we find out we're never dealing with resurrecting the dead, but not at that point. Yeah. All right. So, but I guess they've just never seen anything. This book should have immediately, the beginning should have shown us that last adventure. They should mm-hmm. have been 13 years old mm-hmm. and we should have seen them running around this cool, spooky island. Yeah. And it should have felt groovy and innocent. They should have caught Mr. Wickley. And then we should have realized later on in the chapters through a different spectrum, wow, now that we're adults, like, actually, 
then it wasn't so innocent. Mm-hmm. And we should have been on that adventure with them so that we're yeah. constantly wondering what of the things we saw in the beginning is actually – secretly dark at the end and then Mm -hmm. maybe we could be like oh we know peter we know what peter was like and he disappeared for a while Mm -hmm. maybe he was behind all of this yeah like maybe we could be on that adventure but but we're not we're never really shown what happened 13 years ago we're just told it in little short bursts yeah and so we always feel like we're arm's length from what actually is happening we don't ever meet real peter we meet nate's brain's idea of him possibly Mm -hmm. maybe that is really him we don't know yeah so that is really annoying that you don't know they find out that Peter's dead body has been reanimated. Mm-hmm. He's not in there. There's no soul in there. He's yeah. a puppet. He's like a classical voodoo zombie. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they come face to face with him. And the grand battle with him is like quickly dealt with and they don't seem to feel much of anything about it, mm-hmm. which seems like a problem. Yes. If, if one of your it best really friends weird. has been reanimated in front of you. Uh, anyway, uh, Possible ghost Peter comes face to face with reanimated corpse Peter Mm -hmm. and is like, well, that's messed up. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is a cool moment to put Peter's ghost in Peter's body. Yeah. Or something like that. Oh. Uh, But no. Yeah. Um, So then that body falls over dead again, Uh but it was already dead. And he kills it. Yeah. Which also seems not right. Um, (laughs) And then they fight the lady and they defeat her. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> they, I don't know. Like they kind of defeat her, and then I think the the monsters come in, like the Weezers, right. and then they kind of take it from there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Weezers are the name of the lake monsters. Yeah. And then they blow up the. Uh, no, the island all, kind of blows up, and they can't breathe. Yeah, because of all the CO2 in the water. The uh, the Weezers thrive on co2 which is underneath the lake because there was like an old volcano underneath the lake or something and they do something to make all that come out so the weezers will all come out and so that they can defeat them or something all right so the big giant monster is alive again yeah like it's cool that we never really see him that feels like like ancient horror you're never allowed to really get a good look at him Mm -hmm. they're just like he's he's here and they look out the window we never look out the window they look out the window goes like he's coming he's coming yeah awesome Love it. Mm. They they do a different ritual to reverse it. Yeah. They use the dog's saliva as part of it, and it all completely works, mm-hmm. and they save the day. No one really knows it, but they save the day. Yeah. For some reason, Andy and Carrie – They're able, Well, nobody knows because they're able to evacuate the town because they knew that there was going to be like right. they, gaseous warfare. Yes. They blew – gaseous Maximus. <laughs> they blew up a chemical factory, yeah. which by the way, a lot of the time they thought that it was a conspiracy yeah. by the chemical factory. So this entire time they thought that they were dealing with both at the same time, real demons yep, and also just another conspiracy where there's someone to unmask at the end. Mm-hmm. That's what they think for most of the book. They yeah. think both of those things. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make sense. Um, why? They should have thought one of those things. <laughs> they should have thought like, oh, it, our our adventures used to be so innocent. It was a guy to unmask. Uh-huh. Now it seems to be real demons. Yeah. Uh, it, it is too much. It doesn't – it does. It just never That computed. was such an afterthought to me. I didn't really think about it. When, it. when they Whenever they brought up the RH company or whatever, I was like, eh, I have a feeling this isn't relevant to me. Exactly. And then luckily it wasn't because so if it, it sh- was, I would have been very confused. So it shouldn't be in there yeah. at all. Yeah. But, so they saved the day. Mm-hmm. Andy – Kisses Carrie. Mm-hmm. She's the one that's had a crush on Carrie all this time. Yeah. Is in love with her, and Carrie already turned her down. Kisses Carrie, and then goes, "And we're going to try skydiving." Yeah. And I thought this is the reverse. Mm-hmm. Carrie should be kissing Andy. Yeah. Because now her feelings that's what have I'm saying. It's very woken weird. Up. This yeah. feels very aggressive and weird. Yes. Like, is this fine? <laughs> it's. It doesn't seem right. And then they made some sort of joke about like not having done it yet or something like at the very end at the yeah. pool and, and I was andy's like, like you'll work up to it and I'm yeah like, i was like this oh. doesn't seem so andy is the villain again <laughs> i don't that. like and i don't like Andy, but i i also didn't like any i thought she was annoying but not in a villainous way she's just like weird <sighs> she's not a good person i don't even think she's not a good person i just don't care for her it was weird for her to force that other girl into a relationship with her i don't think she is i think if anything the other girl is like leading andy on actually like andy's not being forced I don't know. She's not. She's being aggressive, but not like, you know, like bad or anything. Carrie's just kind of like flopping her way through it. She kisses her and then says, we're going to go skydiving, meaning we're going to do both of the things yeah, you said you don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? But she keeps like, I don't know, like Carrie keeps like pulling her on top of her and stuff like that. It's weird. I guess. 
so it's just strange all around. I was like, I don't feel good about this relationship. This doesn't seem and like this the, is like a happy ending. And then the final little like Oh my god, Ashen Fox. The final like turd turd dollop. Yeah. On the top of the pile. Yeah. For me at least. Yeah. Nate has a hunch that the dog, Tim, mm-hmm. has a human soul inside he's of him. Insane. I, I was like, what? And then he's he's correct. And a human we've never <laughs> seen before says almost the final words of the book. I know. And he's like, uh, yes, I was in that dog. <laughs> I could <laughs> like, not. What are you talking about? Believe it. Well, yes, you are correct, young boy. I was inside your doggy. It was so weird. <laughs> the whole time. I think that they did mention that name earlier. It, I don't know. The name gave me major deja vu. Yeah. I um, think his name was on one of the coffins under the island. Oh, okay. So he's one of the experimented bodies. But okay. it's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you did accidentally put my human, my human Christian soul into your. I hate that. You know that I don't like things where it turns out there was something hiding in plain sight the whole time or not. Hiding in sight. Like, I don't well, like Peter Pettigrew. Well, okay, what I'm getting... That's the rebuttal that I th- I'm expecting people to say, yeah, by the way. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good point. And that actually plays right into the point of, like, when you like something, you let things go. When you don't like something, you notice all the little... Like, you notice everything that you don't like or whatever. Except, no, my rebuttal to that would be it's set up from the get-go, at least in that book. Maybe not in the first two. Uh, but in Prisoner of Azkaban, he's missing a toe. Well, yes. Uh, all we ever saw of Peter Pettigrew was his finger. Like, oh, there's so enough sweet. that you, you'd look back on and go, like, oh... Well, that makes sense. I couldn't have guessed it, no, yeah. but that I understand what you're telling me. Right. And you're and the whole book is about animaguses. This mm-hmm. is this is hey, what if there's an old man in there and he's like, this it's is nice funny. to meet me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is funny how it was in an autistic boy's head the whole time. Yeah. That's the kind of thing that I don't like. Yeah. Is that like, oh, this I don't I couldn't believe this it. This thing you never wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I hate things like that. Hello and goodbye. And he's like, but it was your dog also. It was also Tim doing, I'm just a passenger. I'm like, wh- what? I know. I couldn't. What? I know. What? I know. What? Oh, and not only that. Because it ties everything up. Then you haven't been betrayed. Like, yes, Tim was in here too. I'm just, I'm just also right. here. So, well, ugh. but not only that, like we've also dealt with De Boingo or whatever his name was being like, well, yes, I was an old sorcerer. And then I disappeared and came back as my own son. And then I disappeared again and I came back as a woman. You'd be surprised how easy it is to get that done these days. You might be interested, Andy. I know. Yeah, the whole thing with Andy, I don't really understand. They keep, they keep reference, like, I don't really, I don't really understand. Like, it's, it's, I guess it's the problem with both wanting to be, um, all inclusive. Yeah. And really not being able to do that. Well, or Andy is just like gender fluid or Except, something. But it's weird that like multiple times people bring up like when Carrie first sees her, she's like, I kind of thought you'd be a boy by now. Yeah. And like, but it and there are other things where like she's flattered when people mistake her for a boy and stuff, which is all fine. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to want to become no, a boy. No, not at all. 100% but, like, of these things. It was just strange. I, I was just like, I don't really understand what's going on. Right. 100% of the things about Andy is perfectly fine. It's, well, yeah. But but my my point is the presentation and the way it's written makes it feel as if somebody who does not know what they're talking about is just saying things about when you're gay <laughs> and how sometimes it makes you just wish you were the other gender, I guess, I which guess. is not I, the case. Yeah, and that's so, not cool. I, know, yeah. I don't know. So it, it, it feels weird. to me then it plays – like an attempt to be very modern about mm-hmm. including everyone, but also being tone deaf about how you're supposed to do that. Yeah. So yes. didn't work. That never that never made any sense to me. Yeah. And is one of those things that makes me go like, how did this get published mm-hmm. in this current form? Because there's a book in there, but yeah. it's not this book. Yeah. I don't understand how this got published. Yeah. Um. But anyway, I, the only reason I was saying that is because. We now know that, like, the ancient evil mm-hmm. uh, is a trans person, which that's a weird thing. Well, I mean – It doesn't matter. Not really a trans person, I would say. Just, like, kind of like conveniently – demon, demon tra- trans. I mean, I don't think that they – I don't think that's part of her thing was that she felt like she was always a woman in a man's body. I think it was just a disguise. I guess. But, like, why would you set up these themes about the way Andy feels about this stuff and then have it be echoed and I never know. have anything about it? It's another one of those I things where know. it's just like, if you're going to do it, do it right. Yeah. I don't know. Just don't do it. 
that like, just don't dance with these topics if you can't totally. see them through to the end. I know that that whole everything surrounding gender in this, I was like, I don't understand. And what, I don't claim to be on. like completely perfectly knowledgeable. I'm also oh, me neither, but like it just seemed. It just didn't feel like it no. was correct. No. <laughs> so anyway, we've now seen an example of the old sorcerer mm-hmm. continually reinventing himself and coming back as his own progeny. Right. And now we've got Tim who has an old man ghost inside of him. And we find out, oh, wait a minute. We thought Tim was the grandson of Sean, the other dog who has a human name. It confused me the whole time. We find out we thought he was the grandson, but no. Oh, Sean, Kristen, no, hold on. Let me explain this to you as I succinctly totally as the book does. I found it was easy to reinvent myself also as well too. And so sometimes Carrie would leave home and come back and she'd think I was a different doggy, but I was the same doggy. I totally So I've been your friend all along. Yeah. It's always been Sean. Always been Sean. How annoying is that? Very. And then the book ends. I totally forgot. And then the book is over. Yeah. (laughs) So is there going to be a sequel with like Ash and Fox like – Leading Ash them Fox. and talking to all of them. I want an Ash and Fox prequel. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. You know who I loved in this book? Ash, Ash and Fox. Fox. I mean, it's, it's actually a really good name. Ash, Ash and, and Fox. Fox. <laughs> I, um, I, um, I'm, I gotta echo what I said earlier. Mm-hmm. This, well, this is also just like a trope of this show. The same way that you look at your synopsis and go like, okay, so here we, oh, what did I, oh, okay. I, I know what I wrote now. Uh-huh. I have to once again try to reinforce the fact that I didn't hate this book. Uh-huh. I just really, really sound like I did. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> um, because the way that I speak, as you pointed out earlier. You're an emphatic dude. I'm an emphatic person. <laughs> I don't recommend this book in a very light way. Yeah. Uh, you might get some enjoyment out of it. If you like this kind of thing, mm-hmm. you might enjoy this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but boy, oh boy, I know I didn't. Yeah. Definitively. Yeah. I did not hate it as much as my voice will lead you to believe. <laughs> I did have problems with everything I just said. <laughs> uh, with everything? With, not everything. I know, I know. I'm not. Yeah. There's a really, this is a great premise. Yeah, it totally is. It's a great premise. Mm-hmm. And it's one that is distinctly now. And makes sense because Mm -hmm. especially like from like the the dry, boring stuff, but it's true Mm -hmm. from like a business standpoint, nostalgia is hot. Mm -hmm. If you just tell somebody something that they liked when they were a kid, they like hearing that. That makes them happy to hear. Uh, And it's the double-edged sword where it's like if you don't do it well Mm – then it doesn't work at all. You know what I realized that I meant to look into before we recorded this episode, talking about things that people liked when they were, when they were kids, and I completely forgot. Bryn, who is a listener in our Facebook group, um, you can search Book Club Schmuck Club Podcast on Facebook, and we have a group, um, mentioned to us the Famous Five, right. which is like a British kids mystery thing, and I totally forgot. I'm sorry, Bryn, I dropped the ball. I wondered. I, you I weren't did, the only one either. Somebody else like maybe commented about it or something. I did but, the same thing. I meant to look it up and yeah. did not. But I, it's beloved. Beloved? <laughs> Both? Yeah. <laughs> but my, like, I wondered if this was like... All right, we have basically Velma from Scooby Doo. Maybe, maybe Peter is just like a character from that, and so we're meshing together these groups from different maybe, similar things. Because people That's a cool referenced idea. it in you yeah. know in reviews about this or something, so maybe there were Famous Five references that I didn't catch because I didn't know about right. it. Right. I've also seen people reference Buffy uh, for this a lot. I mean, and there is a lot of like like defeating, vanquishing yeah. monsters. Mm-hmm. Like she's constantly jamming wooden stakes and a vampire's left, right, and center in, yeah. in that show. Yeah. And I feel like this echoes that a lot more where they're like blowing shotguns into yeah. monsters' faces and stuff. And I'm like, all right, well, those are just like sort of like the nameless thuggy guys, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like that would work for any show. Like, yeah. like they can just pop out from behind a wall. And they like, always oh, go have, to the bronze. We have to fight these tired. and then go to the bronze and yeah. see uh, Willow. Yeah. <laughs> like, cool. Like, okay, that makes sense. But um, I, I just – it never really – because I think he was trying to do all those things, mm-hmm. it didn't coalesce into one thing. Yeah. I also don't like guns as a weapon. If they were um like doing stakes in them all the time, I bet I would enjoy the action a little bit more than just having like guns. Well, they gave Dunia a just, pirate like, sword. Uh Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want that either. This book should have been set in 2017 and these kids know about Scooby-Doo. Yeah. I mean that sounds sweet. Um. Yeah, the time period doesn't make sense for the way they act. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Yeah. Um. All right. All right. <laughs> Is there anything left unsaid that you want to get out there on the record? Not really. The same way that you're like, I didn't like it, but like not as hardcore as you sound. Like I liked it, but you know, 
I, I was thinking, I was having, when, when I was coming, I was like, man, what am I going to say about this? I just don't have that much to say about it. Like, yeah, I liked it. I thought there was a, there was like, it was just like an onslaught kind of. Like, there was like no downtime. There's like always like a big thing happening, which I don't like. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. What was your favorite thing about it? Hmm, let me think. I want to end this on positivity in some okay. form. Um, the, all the Necronomicon stuff and like how the island basically had points that formed a pentacle. Yeah, that was cool. um, That had like pieces of the kids. Like they found a jar in the water that had Andy's hair in it, which is really sweet. It was like tied to a buoy. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, they were like at different points. So the whole island was like a pentacle. That was cool. Yeah. And it felt also very like Blair Witchy at one point. They found like a yeah. bundle that it's had like someone's tooth in it. A hair and tooth. Like, yeah. Awesome. That's yeah. cool. That's there's like cool monster stuff. Yeah, this. there's cool like imagery stuff. I also like that like uh, Nate is in Arkham Asylum, mm-hmm, which yep. is at once a Batman reference mm-hmm. and a an HP Lovecraft reference. Oh, really? I didn't know. Book. Oh, actually, I did know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Batman Asylum is referenced to HP Lovecraft. Yeah, itself. That's so right. I thought that was cool. Yeah, um, definitely. Thegatun yeah. is a reference to Cthulhu, right? In oh, maybe. I guess so. Yeah, I guess. I don't so. know a lot about Cthulhu, but. Yeah, um, from what I know and also from the complicated name, yeah, yeah. I thought that it was kind of – That's good. Yeah, I didn't even yeah. think about that, but I think you're right. Yeah. We should do H.P. Lovecraft or something. I'm not really interested in H.P. No? Lovecraft. I don't think I've ever read a single word. Yeah. I, no, I haven't either. But I've just like read about H.P. Lovecraft and I'm, I don't know. Huh. Like not super interested. Okay. I'll take a look. I mean maybe I've changed my mind, but yeah. I know that I've been like, oh, maybe I'll read this. I'm like, meh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Well then, yeah. why don't we uh, what, why don't we tell the people out there? All right, what we're moving on to? We're gonna leave the Blighton Hills mm-hmm. and the Blighton Summer Detective Club. Yep, and move on to another place that you may have heard of called Twin Peaks. Mm. We're heading back. I'm pumped. Yeah, I am too. I'm real ready for this. I thought that so, I wouldn't want to do this yeah. based on how the season three of the show has been going. But you know what? God help me. Yeah. Even though the show's been kind of stinky, I still love Twin Peaks. So do I. I just do. Even even though I haven't liked a lot of this season, like I'm still in it. I'm so, I'm just like it's one of those like real ride or die institutions for me. Yeah. Like I'm just all about it. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we're actually going to be doing a uh, something uh, a little different. Yeah. We've done something like this before when we read multiple Goosebumps books in yep. a single show. Uh, we're going to read a few books. Mm-hmm. Four, yep. to be exact, for this one episode. Four? Yeah, four. What's the th- fourth one? Well, let's go through them. We've got okay. one is only an audio book. Oh, only okay. ever oh right, right, right. Okay. It's 45 minutes long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of these are kind of – the reason we're going to do them all is because – I'll listen to it with dinner. Yeah, we'll, we'll listen with dinner. Yeah. Uh, it's Diane, the Twin Peaks tapes of Agent Cooper, uh-huh. 45 minutes long. Uh, actually, uh, read by Kyle McLaughlin because sounds good. Is a uh, famous FBI agent Dale Cooper talks into yeah. a tape recorder throughout the show. I bet that'll be fun. I wonder if there's any Twin Peaks music behind it. That'd be kind of fun. Oh, that would it be was fun. Like, like audio drama. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, that'd yeah, be cool. A touch. Um, we're also going to be reading the autobiography of FBI Special Agent Dale Cooper, My Life, My Tapes, as well as, uh, and this is kind of a weird one that I'm surprised it's as thick as it is. Yeah. Welcome to Twin Peaks, Access Guide to the Town. And it literally is like maps of the town, kinds of fish yeah. that are there. Uh, this is definitely one to read with dinner because oh. I don't <laughs> think that I will be able to memorize <gasps> anything in it. And we're going to cap off the episode with mm-hmm. – The Secret Diary of Laura Palmer with a foreword by Twin Peaks co-creators Mark Frost and David Lynch. I am very excited to read this I one. know. I-, I haven't read any of these. Yeah. Yeah. I I really don't know much about any of them. So yeah, I'm pumped about it. The Secret Diary of Laura Palmer is also a a major plot point from the show. Mm -hmm. I've read online over the course of months now people that would refer to one of these four books and go, oh, look, there was a clue buried in that from long ago. So we'll get to see that. Yeah. Uh, Assuming that you guys out there aren't going to be as willing to track down these books. Yeah. Some of them were hard to track down. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, but we got them for the show and yeah. for like just because it's cool Twin yeah, Peaks totally. stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is one of those things where it's like, man, we are just like pumped to kind of read these. Yeah. If you're not going to read along, we're going to read them for you. Yeah, kind of it's thing. yeah, it's fine. You definitely like you know feel free, but we're definitely going to like be reading these 
for you. Yeah. I'm just repeating exactly what you said. Yeah, whatever. It's uh, it's worth reinforcing, I think. I so that people aren't like, for for you're doing for, for me? F- 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 fork me? <laughs> what do you mean you're reading them fork me? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, oh, Kristen said for oh, that's what Will said. Okay. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. That, yeah, yeah. Um but cool. So that's in two weeks. Yeah. And so that will be ahead of the finale of this season, right? right? Is it the week before the finale or something? Uh, yeah, I think it's the week. Or is it two weeks? No, no, no. no. It's, it's the week before the finale. The finale will happen two days later. Oh, great. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then uh, we'll be able to talk about our feelings about all of Twin Peaks eventually, just later on. Yeah, yeah. When the final dossier gets Wait, released. I, kn- I know we did this math, but there are only one, two, three more weeks of Twin Peaks. Fifteen. 16, 17, and 18. Oh. Oh. Oh, because 17 and 18 are on one night. One night. Oh, so right. there are only, as of this recording, there are only three more yeah. nights. Sorry, more guys. Nights. Didn't so, mean to get inside baseball. <laughs> 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 anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's in two weeks. In yeah. one week, we'll be back for yep. another uh, extracurricular off-book mm-hmm. show, shooting the shit, talking yeah. about whatever we want. Yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Yes, thank you. Uh, what did you think of Meddling Kids? Mm-hmm. Uh, do I want to know? <laughs> Do you want people inundating you with tweets about their thoughts on meddling kids? No, I kind of, I kind of feel bad. Not that it ever happens. Not that I get like inundated with tweets of, be- of people being like, "Hey, you thought this?" Yeah, never happened. Yeah, but like, I, I feel bad for not liking this book because I think it's just here to have a good time. Yeah, <laughs> but um, <laughs> you're just incapable of doing so. What could hey? <laughs> That's all. What can you do? Um, you can send us your thoughts. Yeah. Whatever they may be. Yeah. On Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. Yep. I am at Chillin' Kristen. I am at Haunted Sponge and at Will Rogers 2000. Still mm-hmm. don't know what I'm doing. I'm about to say, yeah. back in the saddle? Mm-hmm. Surprised you love with that. I'm just still in the saddle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> still in the saddle, saddle right again. now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll see you guys in the future. Yeah. Hope you had a good time. And until <laughs> then, good talk, gang. Meet in the dirt. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for listening to the show. If you enjoyed this episode, you should consider going to our website, www.talkbomb.com, where we have archived every show we've ever done. You can also visit our bonus show store where we sell exclusive episodes of our podcasts for 50 cents a piece, not to mention our merchandise. If you enjoy Talk Bomb, the best thing you can do is help us spread the word. Tweet, share, review. We would greatly appreciate anything you can do to spread the word. Please also consider following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, where we're at Talk Bomb. Following us online is the best way to keep up to date with our productions. More than anything, we just hope you enjoyed the show. So thanks again for listening, and we'll see you at TalkBomb.com. Um, all right. French toast or pancakes? Oh, God, that's tough. Um, okay. I'm going to say I'm going to say pancakes only because if French toast is bad, it's pretty bad. Like if it's just like very eggy and not really. Well, what if you screw up pancakes and they're too thick? But are they are they cooked all the way through? Yeah. Then that's I think I think too thick pancakes are still better than like French toast that's like kind of wet and eggy. Okay. All right. Yeah. What do you think? All right. So you're saying pancakes? Yeah. All right. Pancakes yeah. or waffles? Uh, waffles. Waffles. Yeah. Really? Yeah. More potential for crispness. Ooh. <laughs> oh. They're more edges inherently, well, kind you're of. Right. Yeah. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you? Both questions. Uh, waffles all around. Okay. Yeah. Wait, well, waffles weren't for part of the first question. So, right, like, if it has to go through the gauntlet, it goes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You, same as you, pancakes, then waffles. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want I mean, But those. same, for, uh, waffles all around if, if I get to choose out of all three. Yeah, waffles for everyone. I love waffles. <laughs> they're so good. Even like, actually, even bad waffles are good. Like, there are these waffles that I have the recipe for that are like healthy waffles, and they're, you know, they kind of suck. Yeah. But then if you put like butter and stuff on, they're. They're perfectly serviceable. These are some serviceable waffles you got here. I'm trying to think. They're like protein waffles. They're like egg and yogurt and oatmeal or something. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. They're, cool. Yeah. As a conduit for toppings, they're okay. 
Okay, go ahead. Actually, wait, no, oh, wait. Yeah. Is this going to be on the show at all? Yeah, I always put the audio test. That's what end. I thought. Yeah. I'm just making sure. Okay, so if you guys are still listening, I have a really hot tip about making waffles. I actually make really good waffles for like good waffles, like not just like healthy waffles. Yeah. So if you Google a recipe for brown butter waffles, and then one of the first results you're going to get throughout all the years that I've been doing this, the, one of the first re- results is always chowhound. It's like chowhound.com or something. Follow the recipe, but there's going to be a step that tells you to brown the butter and then to let it cool to room temperature. But you're going to forget that that's a step if you're anything like old Kristen, and you're going to power right through. Now, the reason they want you to make sure it's cooled to room temperature is so it incorporates well with all the other mix-ins. Because if you put it in when it's hot, it's going to kind of like clump up on itself, not incorporate smoothly. But guess what? You kind of want that because then when you put the waffles on the waffle iron, it's going to create pockets of brown butter and it's so good. Mm. So you heard it here first, gang. Yeah. Get on out there and make a waffle. A brown butter waffle specifically. Yeah. And don't follow the directions. All right. N- next tip from uh, Hot Willie. How about some hot butter loaf? Bowie. Oh, boy. go to the town, ta- go to town and then go to the store. <laughs> <laughs> then, within the town and then you just get a stick of butter and heat it up in your own mouth hot butter loaf <laughs> yeah. all right bye guys loaf uh say thagatukius thagatukius um <clears throat> all right uh uh fuck you know Toaster, what I think strudel about... or pop tarts oh man that's tough i know that it's a tough question but i i want you to power through and try to answer it oh as man. honestly as you can oh man that's really hard let me think about it Okay, okay. When's the last time you had toaster strudel? What are you talking about? But it's so good. I can picture it in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I can picture it in my mouth? Um, <laughs> yeah. I can picture it in my mouth. All right. Okay, but you know what? Let's say Pop-Tarts for convenience sake because toaster strudel, you have to put in the toaster and you have to cook. Pop-Tarts, you can have right out of the sleeve. So – Considering that, considering the logistics of the situation, I'll say Pop Tarts. What about you? Uh, definitely Pop Tarts without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, Pop Tarts. Really? Do you not really like toaster strudel? No, I never liked toaster strudel. Never liked it at all. Didn't really? care for it. Don't want it. Why? It's like flaky. It's good. No, it's not. It's not. Huh. It always ends up too hot, and then you burn yourself on some hot jelly goo. Um, all right. No, what you do Pop-Tarts is you cut- cold from the sleeve or fresh from, out of the toasty. Um, I kind of think cold from the sleeve. Really? Yeah, I, I like them both, but I feel like. When I toast them, I'm like, this is good, but I, I kind of like them from the sleeve. I had an embarrassing run-in with Pop-Tarts like a while ago. Um, Hold run- on. One second. One second. Okay. I just want to say something real quick. Okay. I'm fascinated and I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to think. Whatever their circumstance. Let's say it was a snow day. Maybe that's what it was. Ryan got a bunch of like junk food for us. We're going to have like an at home day or whatever. And he got a thing of pop tarts. So we, and it was like a, it was like what, there's like a bonus like package of them in there or something like that. All right. Hold that thought for one second. When you say there was a bonus package in there, do you mean that the manufacturer accidentally No, slipped? no, no. No, it was like. Another I, I mylar sleeve. <laughs> I don't tarts. totally remember what the deal is, but I think it was, it wasn't just like, usually comes with three, I think. Um, I think it had four in there. So Ryan and I each opened a package to eat them. Ryan, like a freak, just ate one of his Pop Tarts, which is so weird to me, and then left the other one on a plate. Like he was okay. going to eat it later, I guess. Yeah. Just bizarre. So then later, <clears throat> I, a strange man. I kept looking at it and I was like, I really want that pop tart, but I don't really want Ryan to know that I'm eating like this. I'm eating even more pop tarts now. So then I <sighs> ate that pop tart and then I replaced it with another pop tart from the box. And then I ate the extra pop tart of from that sleeve too. And then like 20 minutes later, I told him about the whole thing. So wait, I'm confused. How many pop tarts does that make for you? That's complicated math. <laughs> One, two, three, four. You had four. Yeah. All right. And you tried to fabricate it to make it look as if. As if I had had two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Because first I had three. I had like the two from my pack and then I ate the one of his while he was like in the other room or something. And then I was like, oh man, I don't want Ryan to know. I had been eating a bunch of other stuff too, I think. I was like, I don't really want Ryan to know that I just ate this Pop-Tart like on top of everything else. I'm going to replace it so he thinks it's just his Pop-Tart from before. And then when I opened the sleeve, Did, um, and when I opened the sleeve to put the 
the new fake one there. I was like, well, I might as well eat this one in here too. Did Ryan walk into the room and go, I can tell that's my same pop tart from before. <laughs> <laughs> no, I told him. Oh, my same pop tart from oh, earlier is on the plate. It's the same one. That's the same one. <laughs> no, I told him about the whole operation. Nice. Um, yeah. All right, cool. They were weird too. They were like, like fudge Sunday pop tarts or something. Hmm. They were like not even that good. 